So today we're going to be talking to Nadia Seal Faith. She's a conservation and science associate with the Santa Barbara Zoo. Nadia works on a variety of field conservation programs, such as the California Condor Recovery Program, the Island Fox Recovery and Monitoring Program, California Red Legged Frog Translocation in the Santa Monica Mountains, Western Monarch Overwintering Counts, and various other habitat restoration projects. Hello, Nadia. It's, it's nice to have you with us today. Thank um, you, Ellen. It's nice to be here. <laughs> uh, can you tell us what inspired you to get involved in conservation? Uh, yeah, well, again, thank you. Um, I guess my story isn't really too dissimilar from most. Uh, I've always wanted to work with animals pretty much my whole life. Um, with the kind of limited understanding of what potential animal careers were out there, I gravitated to the one field that I knew worked with animals uh, that was accessible to me, and that was essentially working in a veterinary clinic. So I worked at a local veterinary clinic for about five years and was really serious about undertaking a career as a veterinarian. But after a few years of working at a veterinary clinic, I got the feeling that it was definitely more focused on disease and injury and illness and essentially more the microbiology component of animal care. And I felt that I was really more interested in animal behavior. And that's actually when I found the California Condor Recovery Program. And I became a volunteer with the Friends of the California Wild and Free. And from there became an intern and just was able to see this opening of careers in front of me and really understood how to be engaged with wildlife and local conservation. That's wonderful. I, I'm proud that we had anything to do with your career path. I didn't know that. Um, yep. Can you tell can you tell me a favorite ex, uh, experience or memory uh, from working in conservation? You know, there, there are so many um, and I have been very fortunate. The Santa Barbara Zoo works with so many wonderful local conservation programs. And in my position, I've had just some really incredible uh, memories, but my favorite one is still always when I was an intern, I was working up at the Bitter Creek National Wildlife Refuge. It was an intern for the California Condor Recovery Program and I was trapping and um, I saw a bird come land on top of the flight pen and right in front of me, she had a seizure and fell off. And I really thought that I had witnessed the death of a condor just right in front of me. And I went to go get a kennel to, to bring her to the, the zoo. I came back and she had righted herself. She was alive. Um, I wasn't able to physically net her, but I was able to get her into the trap. Uh, we worked her up the following day and she had severe lead toxicosis. And we were able to bring her to the LA Zoo after a year. Uh, she actually made a full recovery, but there was definitely times where it was touch and go. And uh, there was definitely a big question whether she was gonna live or not. But like I said, she ended up making a full recovery. She ended up nesting a few years after she was released. And it was just a really big eye opener that, you know, one person, even an intern, can make a difference with a critically endangered species. And that's just always stuck in my head and always kind of helped to drive me forward because it means that I can, I as an individual can make a difference. That's wonderful. That's that's incredibly, I mean, just, it's wonderful that you were there and that you could do that. And that's so empowering to have, have made such a difference. Um, what was the most challenging part of becoming a, a conservation scientist? How, how did you overcome that? Well, honestly, the most challenging for me was understanding that there was a career possibility within the conservation science field and not becoming discouraged <laughs> by working in conservation. And, and I say that because in my years as in working in the veterinary clinic, I was able to talk to one of the veterinarians. She and I became really good friends. And she told me her career path in choosing veterinary science over conservation because she was considering a career in wildlife biology. And she said for her, wildlife biology was just so slow paced and uh, you know, she was able to see much more progress on kind of a daily scale in the veterinary field. 
And I think sometimes it's hard to one, understand what it is that conservation and wildlife uh, biology is, but then also to not get bogged down into the day to day and feel like you're not making a difference. And I think one of the, the biggest keys in kind of overcoming back is being able to take a step back and see that conservation biology and you know what working with wildlife is a long haul effort and i think for me sometimes even talking to people that have worked in the field even 20 30 years ago and hearing the stories of where these birds were at there was only 22 in the wild at one point and now it can sometimes feel discouraging that you can't get over a hundred, but you're, there's a hundred in just the Southern California population alone. And that's just a huge jump forward for the program. I think something that also helps me is sometimes just taking a step back. And when I'm out in the field, being able to look around at the CESPI, being able to look around in this wilderness, being able to look around in a closed sanctuary or closed wildlife refuge and realize this is my office. <laughs> and this yeah. is what I get to do. On, on a daily basis. And, you know, those days help me not get discouraged. Working in conservation science helps, again, make, makes me feel like I'm making a difference. And, you know, knowing that I'm working in kind of this long legacy of folks working to save this one species, it makes me feel like I'm a part of something bigger. Excellent. Um how do you hope that your work can help the California condors or support the recovery program? Nice, nice segue there. <laughs> well, honestly, working for a zoo, I think is one of the best ways that I've felt that I can contribute towards the California condor recovery program. Because in the zoo setting, we focus on bringing wildlife to the public. Now, a lot of times people will focus on these big picture policies, will focus on the lead ban, you know, the statewide lead ban, will focus on the bird being listed under the Endangered Species Act. And while these are really important milestones for being able to recover a species, real change, your real long lasting change really comes from individual, really comes from our citizens. And so if we can make the condor an animal that an individual wants to save, that community members of our zoo community, of our Santa Barbara community, if we make the condor accessible to them, let them know what's going on, tell them what they can do, empower those people to help save the species, then that's when real change happens. You know, you can say that lead is banned in the state of California, but unless you're able to reach those individuals that use lead ammunition and let them know that they have the chance to make a difference uh, for this species. And all it takes is a simple switch, a simple behavioral switch and shift in you as an individual, um, then, then we can't really make a change. And in my position at the zoo, we're able to reach those individuals in a meaningful way. And sometimes small actions on a large scale can be a little bit more effective than a large action kind of on a small scale. That's, that's amazing. It's really, it's a hearts and minds kind of thing, making sure that people know about them and love them. Uh, so on a slightly different note, uh, what's your greatest non-work related skill or accomplishment? This is gonna sound cheesy and I've tried to think of just other things, but if I'm truly being honest, it's keeping my kid alive and happy. Um, <laughs> I, I have a two-year-old and I'm really happy that he's just alive and happy. Um, and part of that actually does tie back to conservation. Um, I like to take him camping. He's actually been out to both wildlife refuges. He has pet a condor um, <laughs> and he wow. actually was came to several nest entries in the belly. Um, he kicked a condor while I was holding it in from the belly. Um, you know, he's just made me think about conservation from through his eyes. You know, he still has many, many years ahead of him. He has to live in this world. And I want him to be able to see the things that I've been able to see, enjoy the things I've been able to enjoy. And it actually motivates me to want to preserve 
all the things that I enjoy, all the things in our local community uh, for him, for his future, and hopefully for his children's future too. So again, kind of cheesy, but keeping my kid alive. <laughs> hey, that's that's a beautiful and and very valid uh, best uh, you know accomplishment. I you know I, I, he's he's a cute kid too. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us about yourself. And uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thanks. Always a pleasure, Helen. Thank you. Yeah.